Tim Bell. Uh, a couple of quick announcements before we begin the service. Uh, first of all, I want to invite everybody to our Lenten midweek services on the Wednesdays following this Wednesday, coming up until Easter. Uh, we will have Wednesday night services going up the whole week. We'll have Wednesday night services, um, open hour for private confession and absolution starting at 4 30. Uh, potluck at 5.30, and then a Vesper service where we're going to be studying the book of Hebrews at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Uh, secondly, I wanted to point out to you that on the uh, table back here and also on the table at the main entrance, there are these uh, half-page handouts uh, for the season of Lent. And uh, these were kindly made for us by uh, the vicar, Vicar Bennett at... Uh, Peace Lutheran in Oxford, um, and on one side they have some a, a simple advice for prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, the three Lenten disciplines, and on the other side they have a reading plan during this Lent for the book of Hebrews, which is what we're going to be studying at the midweeks. So uh, you can grab one of those tonight, the reading plan starts today, so you can go home and read the first four verses of Hebrews. Yes, only four verses, not that difficult. And um, you can uh, read, them. and by the time we get through the end of Lent, you'll have read the whole book of Hebrews, um, just a couple verses a day. So you can kind of add that to whatever Bible reading plan you're already doing. Thirdly, um, I wanted to just mention for the uh, service tonight, um, the service will begin with the rite of the imposition of ashes. Um, you should have an uh, uh, insert in your bulletin that has that service in it. And when it comes to uh, the uh, lining up to receive the imposition of ashes, um, what I'll ask is uh, that we'll do it kind of like we do communion where we have people come up from both sides of, of the uh, sanctuary at the same time. And um, if you can uh, just kind of judge for yourselves, uh, make a single file line, I'll stand up here in the middle and do the right of the imposition of ashes, but um, it would be best if not everyone made a line at once because we sing a hymn during the imposition of ashes. So um, if we can just have maybe four or five people in the line at a time, then that way everyone else can be in their seats singing the hymn. Um, I hope that will work out. So hopefully that makes sense to you, but yeah, just maybe four or five, six people in line at a time and then um, just come up as the line gets a little bit shorter. Finally, for the uh, sermon tonight, we're going to be looking at the epistle reading from 2 Peter chapter 1. And we're going to be talking about uh, especially what Peter says uh, when he says that we should supplement or add to our faith. And then he gives a list of things including virtue and godliness and love. And we're going to be talking about that idea of uh, this Lent, how we can supplement the faith that we have in Christ. So be on the lookout for that in the readings and God's blessings on your worship. Please rise. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this day the church begins a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently on his word and draws from it life and hope. Let us pray that our dear Father in heaven, for the sake of his beloved Son, and in the power of his Holy Spirit, might richly bless this Lenten tide for us, so that we may come to Easter with glad hearts and keep the feast in sincerity and truth.
O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, dear Lord. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, Lord. To prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. We implore you to hear us, Lord. To draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in need of our prayers. To give abundant blessing to all works of mercy, to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, To turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy on me. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature. For we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises you have laid up for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made it ever. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you will the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am honestly sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, the poor sinful me. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have mercy on all, O Lord. You have poured nothing you have made. You have cast the sins of men that they may repent. You spare them all because you are the Lord of God. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For you, in you, my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge. Till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God most high, for God fulfills his purpose for me. You will ascend from the heavens to save me. I will stand out to set his love and his faithfulness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You have mercy on all of the Lord, you have for nothing you have paid. You have cast the sins of men, that they may repent. You spare them all because of your power. So the people of Nineveh believed God. 
proclaim a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man, nor beast, nor herd, nor flock taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God, Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fear saying, so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13, responsibly found in front of your hand. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. For I shall surely find my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and I was evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, the light of truth has been with me, and teach me wisdom in the secret of our heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear your life glass, let the bones of you have thrown out of your eyes. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my, all my iniquities. Create me in the heart of God and renew my spirit for me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Lord, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from 2 Peter chapter 1. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you be made, may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even the blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. 
treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. supplement, then those things will get better. Your quality of life will increase. And so in the same way, faith, which saves us, is all that we need. Faith alone. That's what saves. That's what gives us life. But Peter says that faith can also use supplement. That there are other things more to the Christian life than only faith. It's not only faith, it's faith alone. Those things sound the same, but I'm doing a little wordplay here. They're different. This is why James says faith without works is dead. Or like we heard last week in 1 Corinthians, or last this last Sunday in 1 Corinthians 13 that we could have the faith to move mountains, but if we have love, that faith ends up meaning nothing. And so for faith to stay alive, for faith to stay active, for faith to be thriving, it should be supplement. And so we seek these things, virtue and Knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and brotherly kindness and love. Peter says, for if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. That faith wants to bear fruit. Our Christian life wants to bear fruit. And we don't want our life of faith to be deficient in things. We don't want our life of faith to be deficient in these very important things that would cause our life of faith to be riddled with disease and illness and toxicity of all kinds. The issue, however, when Peter says to add these things to your faith or to supplement your faith with these things is it's not as easy as taking a pill. A vitamin D deficiency is as easy as going out and getting some sun every day and taking a pill. But the supplement, if we want to continue the health analogy at least, that would be more akin to what Peter is talking about here is something more like working out, lifting heavy weights, going for a hard run. It's not easy things that he suggests. Virtue takes building habits and sticking to them. Knowledge takes time to study and focus. Self-control takes effort. Perseverance takes fortitude. Godliness takes all these things in combination. Love takes humility. These are not easy things that we are called to do in our life of faith. I was reading an Ash Wednesday sermon this morning by Bernard of Clairvaux in my devotions, and he has this idea where he talks about where the head, that is Jesus Christ, goes, the members of the body must follow. And if we look at Christ and we look at our life in him as members of the body of Christ, with him as our head, we often recognize the goodness that comes with that. All the blessings that flow down from Christ. We recognize the comfort that he gives us and the blessings of fellowship that he gives us with one another and how good it is to know that we are saved in him. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings, grace upon grace. But Bernard said, if you're going to be a member of Christ's body and follow your head, you have to follow him not just in the blessings, but also in the sufferings. For Christ, when he was on this earth, did not only experience good things. He did. He enjoyed time with his disciples. He had fellowship with them. He received good things from his mother and father, and especially from his father in heaven, but he also suffered greatly. He was also persecuted. He was also tempted. And ultimately, he was tortured and died. And the members must go where their head goes. And so we cannot have Christ only one way. We must have him both ways. To be a member of the body of Christ is not only to receive blessing, but also to receive suffering. It's like if you wanted to have your Valentine's candy today, but you didn't want any of the calories that came with it. It just doesn't happen. And you get both things. That's what's wrong, by the way with that Super Bowl commercial, the He Gets Us commercial, is that it only wants Christ one way. Mm. It wants all his forgiveness and mercy and kindness, which is true, but it doesn't recognize also his justice and his suffering and his law. It is fitting that today is St. Valentine Day that we commemorate St. Valentine today. And of course, we know St. Valentine as the saint of romance 
and of hearts and candy and overpriced flowers and all the rest of it. But the real Valentine, Saint Valentine from the third century, if you don't know this, he was a Christian pastor and also a physician and he was martyred for his faith by the Roman government in the third century. And he wrote a note, at least tradition has it, to whenever he was in Roman jail, to the jailer's daughter that had fallen in love with him. But the note wasn't about being his valentine, it was about the resurrection. It was about the hope that we have in Christ. Because he was facing death. And that's what mattered. And so this Lent, we will have both things. We will have both life and death. We will have blessing and we will have suffering. And in this time, we are called in the steps of Valentine, but more so in the steps of Christ to supplement our faith, to do hard things. Not only easy things, not only joyful things, but things that take work. And notice that the supplements that Peter lists here in 2 Peter 1 line up pretty nicely with the three Lenten disciplines which Jesus talks about in Matthew 6. The first is prayer, and if you think about prayer, prayer cultivates virtue. It's a way to build good habits, and it also adds to the knowledge. It is the study of God's Word. It adds to the knowledge of Christ. And so this Lent, pray. If you don't know where to start, start with the at-home prayer that's in the bulletin every week. You can also follow that Hebrews reading plan. You can pick one up on your way out the door. And the second is fasting. And fasting, if we keep going down that list that Peter gives as supplements for the faith, you can't get these supplements at Wholesale Nutrition, one of my favorite stores in South Haven, by the way. But you can't get these there. You have to get these here in your homes. Fasting is a practice of self-control and perseverance. And by the way, I should always point out this in Lent, fasting is not just choosing to give up something really random and posting about it on social media, but you gave up this Lent. That's fine, you can do that. I'm not against that, but that is kind of this cultural phenomenon that people give something up for Lent. But that's not really what Jesus is talking about when he talks about fasting. He's talking about giving up an amount of food. And so you can do that. The advice of the church has always been during Lent to avoid at least Monday through Saturday. You can break your fast on Sunday if you want. To avoid really decadent meals. Meals that are very rich. Especially really either fatty or really sugary. And one thing I would suggest kind of in our modern world as a modern interpretation of that is to try and Cut out, if you can, the highly processed foods because maybe they don't seem rich, but if you look at the ingredient list and the nutrition facts, they seem to be the richest foods in our modern diet. That's just random advice from a random guy. You don't have to take that too theologically, but that's what I would suggest. But regardless, lighter meals, maybe skip a meal now and then, those types of things. And the final is almsgiving. And if we keep going down that list of supplements, almsgiving is a practice in godliness, in brotherly kindness, and in loving your neighbor. The old advice of the church on this is that if you tithe 10%, that during Lent you can add an extra 2% of that to almsgiving. That is giving for the sake of the poor and needy. Now we have an alms fund here that supports a seminary student and also buys gift cards for the poor and needy when they come and ask for help. 
You can also give extra food to the food pantry. And right now I'm working on finding some volunteer opportunities for people who want to give their time for almsgiving during Lent as well. So be on the lookout for those announcements. So supplement your faith this Lent. They're supplements. You don't need them absolutely 100% to have faith. They're supplements. Realize that none of them makes you more worthy before God of salvation or worthy of honor before your neighbor. That's why Jesus specifically warns if you're going to do these things, actually just he assumes that you are going to do these things. When you do these things, do them in secret. Wash your face. Don't let people, don't make a big deal out of it that you're fasting. Don't let your right hand know what your left, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But these things are real supplements too. They are helpful that our faith, as Peter talks about it, would be alive and not short-sighted. Remember what he said in verse 9, for he who lacks these supplements is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. And that's what tonight is all about, by the way, is remembering where you came from. We should not ever forget what Christ has done for us and where we came from. For we came from dust when God created Adam and Eve. And because of our sin, we will one day to dust return. All of us will suffer the punishment of our sin, for the wages of sin is death. But the ashes that were put on your head tonight, remember that they were also Maybe you can smell it a little bit. They were mixed with the oil of frankincense. They were mixed with anointing oil to remind you that even though you are ashes and the ashes you shall return, that you have been anointed by Christ and that he has called you his own and that like Christ himself was anointed at his death, with spices, that you shall also be raised with him. That he has chosen, he has given you your faith. And as you supplement your faith this Lent, always keep in mind that which is at the end of this Lenten tunnel, the Easter joy of resurrection. To him be all the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lives. May each day remind us of the coming of the night when no one can work. 
that the emptiness of this present age keep us united by a living faith through the power of your Holy Spirit with him who is the resurrection and the life, that we may escape the eternal bitter pains of condemnation. By your Holy Spirit, bless the preaching of your word and the administration of your sacraments. Preserve these gifts to us and all Christians. Guard and protect us from all dangers to body and soul. Grant that we may with faith and perseverance receive from you our sorrows as well as our joys, knowing that health and sickness, riches and poverty, and all things come by permission of your fatherly hand. Keep us this day under your protective care and preserve us, securely trusting in your everlasting goodness and love for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Upon you and give you peace. Amen. 